Hello, thank you so much for joining us for this virtual book launch for Tales of Witchcraft and Wonder. We're here in the fabulous surroundings. I can't quite believe we're here, like, in the evening. We got it locked in. It, we're here ourselves locked in, in the folk of Gloucester. Um, and it's very exciting, so thank you so much for joining us. And uh, because of COVID, obviously we're doing things a little differently. Um, but yeah, welcome to our book launch. And now I'm going to hand over to Gareth for a quick tour of this beautiful Tudor building. See you later. Hello, and welcome to the Folk of Gloucester. The Folk is a series of buildings at the bottom of Westgate Street in Gloucester. The oldest being these here, 99 and 101 Westgate Street, which were built in the mid to late 15th century. So that's the 1400s. Uh, the first person to really use it was in 1490, which was a guy called John Stanford. And he was a clothier, so he would have used this as a warehouse, uh, storage, that sort of thing. Um, and originally they would have been much smaller with big courtyards out the back. But it's all original, We've got the original beams, the Tudor beams. This is number 99. Again, it used to be a shop, storage. At one point it was an undertaker's of all things. Uh, and famously a pin factory, I'll show you the pin factory part upstairs later. These are the original medieval south gates of Gloucester that were present during the uh, Civil War in 16, 1600s. We've got a Victorian kitchen here, oh, very nice. And then if we go upstairs. So this building was uh, turned into a museum in the 1930s by the city council. And then they closed it in 2018. And the Gloucester Civic Trust, which I'm a part of, uh, are working hard to get it open again. And not just a museum, but an event space and um, a community building, so try and get people involved in it. This is some original 16th century artwork that was uncovered. Um, we've got some lovely creaky floorboards, nice pictures, rooms everywhere. If I take you up to the next level. As I say, it was famously used as a very successful pin factory. Pins, pin making was a, a big industry in Gloucester back in the day and there would have been a lot of women and children working up here in this cramped space. You can see the pin making machines down here and there was an annex if you look out the window you can just see it down there that was sort of built and extended um, as the industry got more and more popular. Uh, this is a lovely sort of room up here and tonight we are hosting the book and CD launch of Incubus Succubus. Around the folk in Gloucester, the Incubus Succubus. And after over three decades and 24 album, 25 albums, mm -hmm. uh, why did you decide to release a book instead of another album at this time? Well, it's, um, I think everyone's had a lockdown project. Um, and this is kind of, kind of ours in a way. I mean, we had always wanted to tell the story behind the um, trilogy of the Tales of Witchcraft and Wonder. So we'd always planned to do it at some point, but there never seemed to be a right time. Right. Um, so obviously no gigs happening. You cleared out the shed. As you well know. As cleared, well, cleared out, yeah, we cleared out the shed, built a new cast down the garden and done all the other things we could possibly mm. think of. Well, okay, right, let's, <laughs> let's, let's write this book. Um, and so we'd obviously already done quite a bit of research on the on the stories anyway, to, to write the songs. And um, we've got a lot of interest yeah. in local history and folklore. Yeah. So um, so we're able to dig out all the notes and then do a bit more research. And uh, um, that was it. And then we kind of thought, we'll take it in turns writing chapters. Um, 13 is a good number of us. Yeah. 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 Why not? So lucky 13. Because the book's about some stories behind the Tales and Witchcraft and Wonder trilogy of albums. Um, what was the thinking behind this series of albums initially? Because and it's finished now, the three albums are out there. Yeah, this right, book's yeah. Um, a compilation, isn't it? We should probably say it's a compilation of the three albums into one album that comes with the book and the stories relate to that CD. So what was, what was the kind of uh, initial thinking behind that series of albums? Well, I think quite a long time ago, Candy initially was talking about doing something very similar, very, very uh, early on. Um, 25 years ago. 25 years ago. 
Um, and um, nice probably about five years ago, we, we thought, yeah, we'll we'll, um, we'll put uh, and we, because obviously we we've been putting out mainly rock albums for years, and we thought we'd do initially one acoustic right. rap album. But whilst we were doing it, we thought, well, we we might as well do more than one. Um, but we'll start with the first one, which is Barry Awake, and see how it goes. Yeah, yeah. Mm, I think just on a whim. I think we put um, thought at the tales of witchcraft and wonder that sort of came, and then um, before we knew it, we were doing the cover artwork to put volume one. I thought, oh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> volume one means that there has to be at least a volume two. Yeah. So at, at that point, it was almost like thinking we put volume one to you know, thought, really okay. it just yeah, it just appeared. There. It just appeared as we doing the cover artwork. Um, um, right, no, I think at that point mm. we sort of said, right, well, trilogy seems yeah. the obvious thing to do. Yeah. And there was certainly enough material there, enough good stories, good um, Gloucestershire and Worcestershire um, folk stories yeah. for us to get stuck into. So yeah, a trilogy, one, you know, it's a lot subsequent of them. years. Yeah. Yeah, I and mean, of course we were stupid enough to bring out rock albums. Yeah, most in, people would do. Between. Yeah, I know most people <laughs> would, would do an acoustic trilogy over three years or four years. But not even just it's a no. trilogy and the rock albums and the rock albums with the same yeah. years. Yeah. So it's an so, album like every six months. Yeah. Yeah. Two albums so really. going on from that, the majority of English took about took good albums mm-hmm. are like a mixture of rock, gothic rock, uh, orchestral elements. Do you feel that the Witchcraft and Wonder albums also represent what English Succubus are about? Well, there's a different side of us. Yeah. So um, um, it, it's sort of. That sort of sound is on some of the uh, you know previous up albums, uh, um, but it is obviously uh, we, we've been doing acoustic tracks on almost every single album, but not not a full acoustic yeah. album. Um, I think also I like the fact that it allows a band to do the rock element and the acoustic live yeah. as well, not mm. just not just the rock set with some acoustic songs in there. And I think a lot of them, actually, I think a lot of people that follow the band like that having the, the witchcraft and wonder trilogy there yeah because live they know they're going to get something completely different from them. yeah i think so and it, um, what's happened is they've become a bit of an event yeah, yeah, they, yeah the, the tales of witchcraft and wonder um starting off with um blackfriars um which we were at i was that yeah we were there we were there blackfriars and that was part of the lost in history festival um and that was just, it became like a happening because it wasn't just a gig because we had um, storytelling. Yeah. Kirsty Hartsiot is doing storytelling. We had Pipe and Tabor playing as people came in through the building. Um, and it, it's, uh, yeah, it just became as we thought, okay, well, we're going to make this an event, do it every year. And and not run it as a, just a regular, as a straightforward gig. It's almost like a little festival. I get that feeling from last year with, the gigs in Minster were mm. and yeah. Yeah. you know, it, it feels with, with the, um, the Morris, the, the Morris troops coming as well. And it's, mm. it's just, it's taking it somewhere else. Which finder general. Which yes. finder general. Yeah. He was brilliant. <laughs> you know, and I, and I, and I think, cause we, cause the band was going to do just, we're going to finish it last year. And so many people were, you've got to carry yeah, on doing this. Because doing it was going to finish with the albums, wasn't it? That was your original. It was, idea. yeah. We were just going to do it for the three years. Mm, yeah. and, um, and then, of course, the, on the second one, we did, um, hired out St. Breville's Castle in the Forest of Dean yeah. for the whole weekend, which was wild, wasn't it? That was yeah. <laughs> such a wild, <laughs> a wild weekend. It's just such an amazing, amazing location. Um, so, yeah, they've become like, and um, the same, a lot of the same people getting together. Yeah. It becomes yeah. like this kind of, yeah, it's a group of like-minded yeah. people. I think it's like see you next year. Yeah, it is. And it's good. People, people enjoy the enjoy the gig. They enjoy everything that goes on around it. And then afterwards, everybody sits around the fire and has a chat and a drink. Yeah. And it's, it's camps out and that. It's, yeah, brilliant. Okay, back to the questions, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> We're reminiscing. So, uh, how do writing the book differ from writing writing songs? Um, well, I think really it's it's actually slightly. I find it slightly easier to actually write your book. Right, because you, you don't have to think about rhyming, and you don't have to uh, um, sort of uh, put you know some some of the more uh, gruesome elements in a more poetic way. <laughs> you can just tell it as it is, really. Um, but um, yeah, it, it, it's um, it, it is a very enjoyable thing. Um, but um, 
you obviously have to research it properly. Yeah. Know, because in, in in a song, you can take you know parts of of, of the story. You you don't have to reference it. Um, you're not really going to be questioned on it. Yeah. But when you write a book, you you, you have to make sure that you know it, yeah. it has a source. You know, and where that source is, and and um, you you have to be able to produce that source if you need to yeah. to back up what you've actually written. I think I think the strength of the book as well from reading it myself yeah. is is the fact that it's almost we were saying before we were saying earlier when we were talking about it a couple of days ago, it's it's almost like in the old days when us people remember vinyl and we used to kind of take it out and you'd read the lyric sheets and you'd read and you'd kind of study and pour over the artwork the and, and, and the sleeve notes yeah. and everything. And it's and it's it's like an accompaniment to the CD in the back is an accompaniment. Mm. The, the book is an accompaniment to that, really. And it's, you, yeah. you know, people know these, some people know these songs that have bought the albums over the last few years. It, it's, I think it's great that they can now go back. And I've, and I've seen comments where people say, oh, it's great that you can read about, say, the Uli Gorilla or whatever, you know, and you can mm. read a story about the Uli Gorilla or, yeah. or, or whatever. And it's, it's um, Yeah, and it's, I'd like to hear some people saying that they're, they're playing the CD and they're reading yeah. the book. Which is um, what you used to do with albums covers. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. You'd have yeah. it playing and then you'd be reading about it and you'd just yeah. talk in the background. So it's, yeah, because it is a yeah. kind of like a, oh, I'll come back to that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so most of these stories are lo local to Gloucestershire and the Cotswolds. So um, I know the answer this really, but why do you decide to concentrate on this area? Because it's home. <laughs> <laughs> the Shire. It's, it's the Shire. <laughs> well, I think, I think it's well because uh, quite a lot of the stories in, in there are not generally very well known. Um, they're, they're like um, probably unheard of out, outside of uh, Gloucestershire and some of them are only stories which, which like um, are, are not actually written down elsewhere. It's yeah. it, it's like uh, things which people have spoken about have yeah. happened. Um, and, the folklore isn't it? Yeah, yeah. but um, it's not actually written down it's what you know you hear at work or something yeah. People say, "Oh, like like in in the the Jury Dreamer, so a woman who grows the plant in her garden, and she's she's very prim, and um, she has the plant in in, in her garden, and it, and it, it changes her. Yeah. It, it makes her a, like a, a a sexual sensual person, and when the plant dies, she goes back to normal. Yeah. It's it, yeah. it, it's sort of quite an, an interesting story, I thought, and I yeah. thought that, it, it made a good song, but it's it, it's also it's quite interesting to know what the story is. Behind, yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. Okay, that leads on quite nicely to. Uh, do you have any favourite um, stories from from the obviously from the book and the CD? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I, I I would say that 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 is probably the um, well when I first heard that story, I I, I was quite interested in it. And, and thought that it, it sort of had a, a sort of very interesting sort of um, well, it was it, it's a sort of like a dark romance. Yeah, 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 very dark. Yeah, and I thought that that was a, a very in, interesting story. Um, I, I, I have, um, obviously the story about Maud Bowen is very dark, and that's. Yeah. Uh, but that, that that's got a, a well documented tale, really. It's uh, it, it's uh, I think I originally got the source from uh, Norman's History of Cheltenham, which I think it's about eighteen twenty five. I think right. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, exactly. So some of them are, are, are more well known than others. But... Yeah, yeah. Can um, favorite? Yeah, I, I think The Witch of Berkeley is one of my favorite yeah. stories, and and. Um, I, I grew up in Saul, so Barclay is just down down the road from where I grew up. But I didn't I didn't know the story until I started working here actually in the folk <laughs> when the folk museum, and we were putting together an, an exhibition on Gloucestershire folklore, and then I read the story as we were putting it together. So I went down to the the archives to to try and get a bit more information so we could set up the exhibition, and oh, it's just it's just absolutely sort of gold mine of of um, folklore and. And mm. um, I was just fascinated by the, this this story. This woman who was very wealthy, um, and um, she just lived this, this wild, wild life. And then she thought, "Oh, bloody hell! What, what's going to happen to me in the afterlife? <laughs> I'm going to have to <laughs> atone, for, atone for my sins." Yeah, particularly as her, 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 her 
son was a monk and the daughter was a nun. I guess she kind of thought, you know, in the days of drawing. So it's just a fascinating story and and, and how superstitious people could be. Yeah, yeah. Um, and sort of thinking, how am I going to protect my soul? Stop it being taken and taken away from me when, from, yeah. to pay for all the sins <laughs> by, by living it up. So it's a great story. And uh, any stories that didn't make it into the book or even of the album trilogy that will be appearing later on? There's, oh, there's so, there are so, <laughs> so many. Yeah, yeah there's uh, so, it's just, just absolutely rich. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that'd be a volume. But the thing is, I mean, we're, as we've, we've always included those yeah. kind of songs, like yeah. more Bowen, yeah. Lossie's from a very old album, and, yeah. and Sabrina um, was from the early days as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's, I mean, we've always written about those things, but just the trilogy was just a way to concentrate purely on that aspect of Inky the yeah. Succubus. So I think what we'll do is, is obviously continue to write those those kind of songs. But they'll but appear on the other They'll album. appear yeah. on regular albums. Yes, yeah. yeah. It's just as they have done in the past. Yeah. Um, any plans for a second book uh, with more tales from the witchcraft and wonder? I think it's a big possibility, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's yeah. lots. We yeah, the, the, there's one. quite a few of the stories which 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 um, didn't go in, in the book. There's the whole uh, like stories about Barrow Wake. Um, well, the thing is, it, it's yeah. over three albums, and this is compressed into one. It is, one yeah. album, isn't it? So there's, 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 there's and um, maybe maybe put some of the tracks in the same sort of style. Yeah. Uh, which appeared on other uh, albums, you know, uh, like Dark Sisters and yeah. um, tracks like that, which are not actually on in the Witchcraft and the Wonder trilogy, but are in the same vein, you know. Right. Yeah, well, I think we've enjoyed the process. I think it's a mm. bit, initially it's a bit daunting thinking, oh, are we going to write a book? Oh, God, are we going to really, really going to write a book? And, but we actually enjoyed yeah. the process and then putting the whole thing together and designing and doing the drawings and I like the way sort of, the artwork and everything ties in with with the albums as well I like the fact that you you've written you know your the one story telling and then it's kind of alternating through the book yeah. I think it works really well I thought there was yeah because obviously we've got different writing styles yeah, yeah. so it, it's um so you've got a, a actually knowing you it's and I, and I read it without knowing who written which story when I started mm. to read it and I knew that the first one was you and I knew the second one was telling before, before yeah. just because the style comes through. Mm. As no new as people as, as well. That's, you know, that right, is, yeah. that's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Comes, yeah, which is good, you know, because it shows your character in in the yeah. book. Okay, so finally, tell us a bit about the. I mean, we touched on it, but the witchcraft and wonder concerts, and will the band be doing some more of those at some point? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, hopefully, yes. Yeah. Um, um, we may even there is a possibility we might be able to do something in. Around here, possibly. Yeah. Um, just have to wait and see how, how things pan out. I mean, we be, because it's very difficult for bands to actually play now. Uh, obviously, the first times when people do start playing again, it's going to be in front of much smaller crowds. Yeah. Which, um, which that sort of style, I think, works better. Yes, it does. I think it does as well. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. It, it's 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 almost with that kind of style. You you're on the same level uh, with people, and it's almost. It, Everybody's included in it. Really. Yeah, it's, yeah. Um, I think playing playing rock gigs. Um, I think you've got to have a crush. You've got to have. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you yeah. you need that energy, and you need mm. you need it to be yeah. sort of packed in there. Yeah. Otherwise, it, yeah. it just just doesn't feel right. And so, I mean, we don't know when those days are going to mm. come back to be able to do a, a rock gig. I mean, they will. They, you yeah. know, there will yeah. come a time, yeah. but yeah. probably a lot sooner would be able to do sort of acoustic gigs yeah. a lot so yeah the logistics are it's workable excellent okay hello again okay this song is one that's written all about the um may hill in the forest of dean this one's called forest hill <laughs>
So one of the songs uh, in the set today is Lost to the Sea. Uh, Tony, can you tell us the story behind that song? Yeah, it's a, it's, it's, um, it's a story which, which, which is uh, one of the stories we, which I was saying, which isn't actually written down. It's just like, um, we, which um, I've heard about what people have actually talked about. It's where a, a, a young man um, finds a mermaid uh, washed up on the shore oh, right. and uh, the body is all... Um, you know, it's, it's broken and, and, and the hair is blowing in the wind and everything. And um, basically, um, he becomes obsessed with the mermaid and he films the, the body, the uh, decomposing body, and puts it online and the spirit of the mermaid comes to him uh, very angry. <laughs> okay, and um, it, it, it's supposed to be a true story. So, uh, but it's also also a very modern story. Right, um, I, it, it's a bit out of Gloucestershire, but it, it was still a story, you know, which happened relatively close yeah. to here. And uh, it's it's a sort of quite haunting story, I think. And um, and uh, it, it also deals with the sort of like um, unrequited love and an anguish as as uh, apparently. A, if you dream of a mermaid in in, in, in your dreams, it, it's it rep, it represents a lover which which you can never have. Okay. Yeah. Apparently. I mean, there's so many things about these yeah. great songs. Yeah. <laughs> and what I what I really like about it is that it is so dark, and that you have mm. this you know the association with mermaids, you know the the, the aerial things, yeah. the beautiful beautiful female. Yeah. And um, and the fact that it's she's broken, she's yeah. dried out, she's, she's a husk, husk yeah. of her who's sadly, you know, yeah. there's, no, there's nothing attractive. No, and about it's her sort at of all. like the eyes are gone from from, from the yeah. sockets. But he still, she still has a magic, even though she looks like that. And yeah, uh, um, he de develops a, a sort of sexual, fixation on her, really. Yeah, a, 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 a fixation on her, and. Uh, she comes to him as a whole person in this dream. And um, yeah. A bit like a succubus. A bit like a succubus, yeah. There you go. Yeah, there you <laughs> go.
Okay, this uh, next one is a song all about uh, the things women have had to go through and through the dark times and ways to uh, just to make things work, to get, a, get by in life. This one's called Dark Sisters. It's Nick from Inkies, um, from sunny lockdown Nottingham. The sun's shining beautifully outside and we're all stuck inside with coronavirus raging around the corner. Um, it's a great disappointment to me that I'm not going to be there for the book launch um, this week, but um, I'll be there in spirit. Uh, and I thought I'd send a little message um, from me over to you guys 
um, with a, a sprinkling of Hopkins man to keep the magic alive. Um, and I'll see you all soon. Catch you soon everyone. message there we're missing him so much um, but that's the nature of uh, coronavirus he's he's stuck up in Nottingham he's, not about, he's with his lovely family but we are desperately missing him and so th this next one is and we're sending lots of love to you Nick this next one is called Corn King <laughs>
second song in the set from the um, album of it that comes with the book is Sabrina. Mm. So can you tell us a little bit about the story there? Right? Yes. Yeah. Um, growing up in the Seven Side Village, um, I've just always had this real draw to to the river, and and Sabrina is the the Roman name for the goddess of the seven who she was actually drowned in the in the river um, but of course yeah this this pull which i know will always be be with me is this this pull towards towards the river um, and it's plays such a big part you know, growing up like the horseshoe bend of the, the river or the, the villages there so it's almost like an island yeah. and so there's no kind of escaping you obviously you've got the you've got the the canal cutting off one port and then you've got the river going all the way around um and so growing up with with the the seven boar and fishing i used to go out elvering when i was younger um and very much i mean i used to drink jasper cider by the river and because he, he was a he was um the um what do you call water it bailiff. water bailiff yeah <laughs> water bailiff so uh yeah it's, it was a really big part yeah of life there you know because it's it's and, and it, it was a livelihood of most people there and Saul was built up around the, the shipbuilding industry and um, so even though you, you sort of often think about Gloucestershire being landlocked you know it's not at all I mean the no. river Severn such a powerful river and there's so much trade going up to you know, Worcester and beyond yeah. and then yeah. uh, to, to the Bristol Bristol Channel um, so yeah it's a very potent Force and uh, like in the song, I, I say that um, love the river, but also we fear her power because a number of times I've nearly drowned. Yeah, in yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes we're drinking just the side. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> now and again. Um, but it, it's it's that thing about sort of respecting, yeah. respecting the river yeah. because she she is a frightening force. Um, and the you know the mud banks, you can if you if you. If you you time it wrong, the, the, the tide comes in so quickly that you, you have to respect her. But she's beautiful too. I absolutely adore the river. Um, so Sabrina was a, a song that was written very early on um, yeah. in the band. Um, and then uh, we re-recorded it and yeah. get it new treatment. Of course, Nick playing fiddle on it as well. Just got that soaring yeah. Yeah. fiddle. Yeah. And it's just, just beautiful. So, yeah. Thank you very much.
this is the, our last one for this evening, so thank you so much for joining us for this book launch. But uh, please do get your questions in uh, straight after this one. We'll be doing a Q&A, and so be gentle with us, please, please. Okay. <laughs> okay, this one, if, if you're a fan of the band, you may already guess which one we're going to uh, save till last, because it's, it's become a bit of a tradition in our 31-year history. So, I don't mind being predictable. This one's called Witches. This is live. <laughs> Tell you this is live. <laughs> the guitar knows it's live. I think it's an inanimate object, but... Uh, I know, she knows what's going on. <laughs> you spanned your toenail from last night, wasn't it? <laughs> Which is?
where we're missing the audience. <laughs> we know, oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're too kind. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, as you know, this is the, a book launch for... Do you want to grab one of the books? No, no. Just in case anyone forgets what this is for. Um, yeah, during lockdown, so Tony and I have been... <laughs> good to do the product. Do the Sailor's sell Century product. That's it. Work it, work it. <laughs> Give it more pout. <laughs> so yes, this is, this is what Tony and I have been working on um, over during lockdown. Um, so we've been... Um, CD. <laughs> <he's gonna laughs> All right, don't overwork it. Okay. <laughs> don't prostitute yourself, are you? <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we've been working on these. Uh, uh, we've got a huge interest in uh, local folklore um, and being Gloucestershire types. This is uh, where our hearts are. And uh, over the years, many, many years, we've been learning about local folklore. And so we just delved a little deeper to put this book together. Um, and it was the inspiration behind many of the songs on our Tales of Witchcraft and Wonder trilogy. So I'm hoping some of you are asking a few questions and uh, we've got a mark the lovely mark here which you can't see which is a shame mark come up come on <laughs> <laughs> he, he is an adonis but you'll have to take my word for it okay this is uh yeah so do we do we have some questions, yeah, we've got some thank questions. You. but first i just want to say thank you very much on behalf of the whole book team this is the first time in 500 years of this building The inspiration, as I say, it's uh, going back many, many years, both Tony and myself, before we, we met, which was 30, mm, 31 years 31 ago. 31 years ago. 32 uh, years ago. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you, you're feeling every moment, but obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Then no, uh, we've, we've uh, both of us had a, a huge interest in in witchcraft and folklore, mm. um, and uh, as I said earlier in the interview, I, I I worked worked here before I met Tony in the in the the, in the folk museum, um, and it's just there, there's such a richness of folklore and tales, and that scene just runs so deeply and beautifully through through Gloucestershire and the Cotswolds and beyond that um, yeah we, we started I mean right from the early days we started writing songs mm. about folklore um, most of them sort of rockier yeah um, but yeah yeah so it's just just feels natural for us locally do you think Yeah, the book. Um, probably, um, well, the the favourite story which I wrote of this is uh, The Children Dreaming, because I think it's uh, it's uh, it's quite a dark story, but it's also, um, you know, it's sort of quite romantic in a sort of way, in a sort of funny, sort of dark way, and it's also quite funny. Yeah. Um. Not a story so much, but Sabrina is something that's very, very dear to me. Um, I say it's not a just one story so much, but it's it's just about the, the power and, and the, the magic of the river, River Severn. So yeah, that would be it for me, I think. Yeah, I think I think what you have to do is you just have to have key lines within the lyrics that uh, are a reference to the story, and hopefully people will then pick up those lines and then maybe look more into what the story is, yeah, or by the book, and it just <laughs> gives you the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it makes sense. Uh, a couple of questions. Up. I don't 
don't see why not. I don't see why not, no. no Could. Yeah. yeah, there is, yeah, yeah. And something that's come from, from a lot of the comments, they love to see you, they want to see you again. So do you think sometime in the future, yeah. if not live, online? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, I, d I think we're all missing live music, live events, so much theatre. Mm. I mean, whether you're in a band or whether you're, you're a, a performer of yeah any kind of venue yes mm. just just missing that i mean i think it's wonderful that events are happening just in a very different kind of way mm. like the apple day here at the folk which is brilliant and you know and it felt like almost there wasn't a pandemic going on in the world it's, it's weird in that this place comes to life and the color comes in when the people are here yeah 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 absolutely even if just you're on, even if you're online it's, mm. it's still yeah in yeah. Yeah, we, we need as many people as possible to. I mean, this bu building is just so beautiful, and she's just aching to have life and energy mm. brought into her again. So. Somebody's asked who's the bossiest person in the band? Bossiest. <laughs> <laughs> That's him. <laughs> yeah, it's Mar Marcus um, uh, used to be a, a teacher. Um, Marcus, uh, yeah, he's he's recently uh, giving a teaching for rock and roll lifestyle. <laughs> so yeah, definitely Marcus. I'm so glad you didn't say me. <laughs> so just to check, you can buy the book on your on your website. Yeah, incubusbuzz.com, and also buy it at the Folk as well. It's, you can, yeah. Yeah, it's at the Folk, and it's also at the Yellow Lighted Bookshop in Nailsworth. So thank you, Herod. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want it, if we want it signed, then we're sending them out to sending out signed yeah. copies. And you're on to the second print now as well. We are on the second print. print. Yeah. Yes, it's going yeah. better than better than we expected. So we, yeah. we're absolutely so you, absolutely delighted. Yeah. So you've only got a few first editions left. We've got maybe six. Oh, better yeah. getting quick for the first edition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Thank Good. you. So thank you everybody for joining us and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you very much. Thank and thank you, you for everybody who tuned in. Yeah. I appreciate it. Bye bye.